So I'm here to get a uh, sports massage from my uh, physical therapist. I got new area to test them. Really? Yeah, look at that. Oh, okay. Uh, what is that, sir? Uh, I actually thought you needed it. I noticed it. Ah! But now I see your video, you still do all the stupid crazy shit. Is that crazy? Yeah. Ah! Yeah. He usually don't scream like this. Yeah. He usually scream like a bro. <laughs> I think he's doing it because of the video. <laughs> no, it's not as bad today, but I still feel it on. Ah! 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 I'm Nachos, uh, I have been practicing parkour for 12 years and uh, I've also been coaching parkour for about 6, 7, 8 years, yeah, thereabouts. I resigned to the fate that eventually I will be in an office job where I sit down and type all day or read papers or read emails or whatever. After I did parkour, I realised that kind of life really isn't for me. Initially, I was a performer, so I did uh, acrobatic performances, stilt walking even. And then slowly, as parkour became more well-known, there were more parkour-focused performances. My work slowed down. First, it was a, a spacing between the five people. Then suddenly, there was the circuit breaker itself happened which is uh, absolutely stopping all physical activities, not say physical, commercial activities. That includes the classes uh, like in-person commercial activities. So we went online, but I had a lot of colleagues also who were teaching online. And then I thought to myself, what should I teach? So I decided to say that I was doing uh, body conditioning. So at first I wanted to make it specific for the core. So I call it the parkour conditioning. <laughs> Yeah, for me, especially difficult because the house is not a place where I considered training to be done uh, because of my upbringing. Parents always yelled at me when I do any training uh, inside the house. And needing to train indoors, needing to warm up indoors or inside the household uh, was difficult for me. I, I couldn't bring myself into the mental state to want to train. So there are days where I did absolutely no training and the only training I did get done was when I was teaching class. So it affected me mentally quite poorly because my partner, her, her job can be done online. So she's working all day, whereas I'm kind of lazy and it does put the pressure on our relationships. One more thing of the circuit breaker that it affected was our community gatherings. Because for the past three years, without fail, Every month, we will gather once and then it's a huge group of like 50 plus local practitioners, people from different academy, they'll come in and we train together. Initially, when it started, a lot of problems because if you suddenly see 30 or 40 or 50 people come and start jumping on things, uh, if I see it, I would also be concerned. So, in the earlier days, we got a lot of police complaints and all. I mean, no permanent record or anything, they just tell us to move on and don't gather so whatsoever. And then, as time goes by, we got more organised. We did formal warm-ups. I'll tell everyone, you must be here at this time. And then you have 30 people warming up with one person. So if you're a conservative thinking person, you see a bunch of people doing basic looking stretches. It's very hard to paint a bad story. If you see them, you're like, oh, they're warming up. And next thing you know, we're jumping them out. And they'll be like, oh, they're doing some weird Kung Fu, so okay. So at least they see organisation and uh, the Singaporean conservative mindset is I need to know who is responsible, who can I blame, who can I arrow. So it's very clear that one guy is leading the warm-ups. Like, okay, that guy looks like he's in charge. So anything happen, I point to that guy. So nowadays, small group trainings are, be, are being stopped even more by uh, police because they got uh, another reason on top. If they see more than five people, they are like, hey God, gathering of more than five people. And I have a tough time explaining, even though it's like two separate groups spacing out legitimately three meters apart, then the police are like, can I help you bro? And it's like people complain, so I gotta ask you to move. It sounds like they just want an excuse to keep the status quo of a space. What do I look forward to is restrictions lifting up. I can host my bigger 
uh, gatherings because that's where people really connect and mingle. There are some people who form their own satellite communities. They pick up Pakwa on their own, but they don't know of the larger community. Maybe all they know about Pakwa is what they saw from the coaches. And when they make the time to come to the bigger community, they realize Pakwa has more flavors to it. Maybe the coach only introduced vanilla. When they come, they get to taste Neapolitan. It's, it's a whole buffet.